There is absolutely so much to see here. It is insane. The Choate family lived here. So in 1885, Catherine Lynch and her daughter Mary struggled to make ends meet, and what they used to do for work was laundry. And this is what they would do. So they would soak overnight. Boil white linens and cotton, rinse, rinse again, and then they dip it in starch and hang it out to dry. And number two was scrubbing a hot fly suds. Start with these down here, which are called treadles. All of our treadles are connected to these up here, which are called harnesses. And all of our harnesses are connected to these, which are called our warp threads. They're connected by these metal pieces right here, which are called our heddles. And all of our heddles have little eye-like pieces. So, like this right here, they're like eyes of a needle. Um, like a sewing needle. They're all connected by those. So when we raise our harnesses, we're also raising our warp threads. And we create this nice little gap right here, which is called a shed. So we use this, which is our shuttle. And inside of our shuttle is our bobbin with our weft thread on it. Our weft is what goes back and forth. Our warp goes up and down. So we pass our shuttle through the shed. And then we use this, which is called a beater bar, to make sure that it's packed down, that it's nice and tight. It's not going anywhere. It's also even. And then we'll switch to our next treadle. Um, so this time it's raising up one and three. So all of the strings that were laying flat are now in the air and all the ones that were in the air are now laying flat. It's the opposite. So we pass it back through that shed. And we use our beater bar again. Make it nice, tight, and even. And then we basically keep doing that back and forth. Um, you can get different patterns depending on how your treadles are connected to your harnesses. Um, so like these ones, um, this one is a more complicated one. It's called a twill. It goes in a diagonal line. Uh, this one is called a basket weave. It just goes over two under two. Um, whereas the plain weave goes over one under one. Thank you. Of course. So this was an outhouse. And Mary Scott and her family had used of a shed built in the 1800s attached to the back of a house and it was divided into three parts. One was a shed used for storage, another one for coal and wood, and then the last out the last part of it was used as an outhouse. So this is an example of what the house looked like in 1943 in the midst of World War II. So now we're gonna learn how we became the U.S in this next museum. How we became us? Oh, <laughs> oh that's funny. Okay, I read that wrong. Out of the many voices, stories, lives, we become us. All the different cultures. This 
is what the U.S. Border Patrol would wear. Oh, this is beautiful. It's a heritage dress for celebrations. It's just absolutely beautiful. It was a dress to show diversity in the 1960s. This is all from the Hawaiian nation. This is from the Nez Perce tribe. Incorporating Western lands. This is a really beautiful museum. Things that they found in Philadelphia and the Mississippi River. It's an African cowrie shell necklace that was made for trade in 1776. An iron helmet. And this is actually a hat, believe it or not. These were signs that were used for petitioning in Washington. These were household gadgets. Door hangers up there where the pumpkin is. And then these were campaign pamphlets from 1952 to 1956. This is how they would um, promote candidates. Reagan and Bush, the caucus for president, and there's the Make America Great Again hat. Punch card recorders that were used to vote. Here's some more of um, promoting candidates for other parties in the era of Andrew Jackson. Well, look at that. They actually put that in your hair. This whole museum, um, this section of the museum is dedicated to Latin female journalists. And fun little fact, I was actually on Univision for a commercial when we had our medical equipment company back in the day. Oh, look at that. This is the... Dorothy's are tiny ruby red slippers from 1939. Oh, Miss Piggy. R2D2. I used to have a Kermit doll puppet, and I also had one that was animal. I don't know if y'all remember that. 1976. The Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey poster. Ah, look at this. This is from 1840 to 1910. It was a costume that was worn in 1857. It's a replica. Charlotte Cushman. So this was a mail order costume for a show, a minstrel show in 1905. The costume worn in South Pacific. This is the Prince guitar from 1983. Here we've got Paul Simon's guitar from 1991. So this is part of the children's television show that I used to watch growing up. Cookie Monster. Rosita from 
the original Blue Grover. And then they turned them into a different color. Okay, who remembers All in the Family? The landmark 1970 show. These were props that were used from 1971 to 1979. The Italian Stallion. These are from 1970 to 2000. Look at that big old boom box. We used to have one of those. All these are from 1990. The blue dress from the crazy rich Asian movie from 2018. <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres' suit from 2016. And the shield that Chris Evans as Captain America used in the Winter Soldier of 2013. Look at this gown that Eleanor Roosevelt wore in 1933 to 1945. Look at Nancy Reagan's suit that she wore. This next dress is from Jacqueline Kennedy's state dinner dress. It's a yellow silk evening gown with an overlay of crepe chiffon that she wore in 1961 for the state dinner. The hot pink dress is from um, Mamie Eisenhower. No, no, the designer. Oh, yes, Matched her shoes and her bag. Oh, those are gorgeous. From the 1923 to 29. Wow, this is Rosalind Carter's gown that she wore in 1977 for the inaugural address. Look at her bag. Nancy Reagan's dress that she wore with her shoes, bag, and gloves. Absolutely stunning. Barbara Bush's dress that she wore her gown in 18 or 1989. I remember that. Her famous pearls in her bag. This is the gown that Hillary Clinton wore. It's actually a purple gown in 1993 with her matching shoes and bag. She was tiny. I didn't realize how tiny she was. Laura Bush in her famous red gown. Then we have Michelle Obama in 2009. That's beautiful. Look at the jewelry. Malaya Trump. That is stunning. This is Lady Bird Johnson's gown, inaugural gown from 1965. And that is her gown, and that is her coat. It's absolutely beautiful. This has to be my favorite part of the museum.
Ulysses S. Grant purchased this carriage. Here's a model of the representation of the Philadelphia as it appeared in 1776. How small those hats are. Fall of the Berlin Wall. This is the Medal of Honor to um, General William Perkins from 1967. United States Medal of Honor to Alfred Rascon. The Medal of Honor to McGraw, Francis McGraw. Let's walk into the Molina Family Gallery. I used to go to my grandmother's house and my aunt had a dress like that and every time we went to visit I'd put it on and I'd pretty much have it on the whole entire time we were there visiting. I remember that except mine had um, very detailed embellished bright colored flowers on it. This is what uh, the refugee boat. Hmm? It's a refugee boat. I know. So two people were in that that escaped Cuba in 1994. Look at the size of a bathtub. Holy cow! This is an... It's a regalia dance outfit. Isn't that beautiful? It's made out of red velvet. It's a big generator. God, there is just so much to see. These are the electrical power in the homes. So these are all the different lights and lamps and vacuum cleaner. Look at that. Look at that griddle. Waffle maker. Yeah. That was an elevator. The switch panel. Check that out. Holy cow. What's that for? It's like breakers in your home. Oh. <laughs> so these are all different steam engines. Westinghouse compound engine from 1896. What do we have over here? Another engine. I've never seen so much stuff in a museum before. Another Corliss engine. And this is a another Corliss driving engine. These are gas engines from the 19th century. 
internal combustion engines, steam turbines. Now look at that. Westinghouse. Let's see what this is. So there is an engine that would, it's a steamboat engine. So this would be it right here. This is what would be on that boat. Let's take a look at this over here. This is big. So this is a six horsepower steam engine from 1829. So this section of the museum is called America on the Move. Reinventing the car, the Tucker sedan. Look at this. It's a motorcycle. It's a Honda from 1966. CB77. <laughs> On the interstate, 1956 to 1990. Now we're headed to the trains. What the train station would look like. This is so freaking amazing. So the little windows would open up with these little cranks. That's where the driver would be. Saying goodbye to the train station. Wow. <laughs> car shopping, window shopping. For the new car. Look at that. We've got a pregnant mama. Oh my word. Here's an RV. Wow. over here. You can hear it in the background. That is beautiful. 1927. ship section. A ship in 1920 in New York. Oh, wow. Look at that. Speedy luxury is what it's called. Only the wealthy. Got to ride that. So this is all about food. It's Julia Child. Her actual kitchen. Davy's Dream. Fresh red velvet on the top and inside. 